I'm not ashamed. Were the Pharisees really wanting to know whether it was lawful to pay taxes? This is the question that we seek to answer today as we continue our verse by verse study of the book of Mark on Walking Through the Bible. If you have a Bible with you, turn to Mark chapter 12. We're going to be reading from verses 13 to 17. If you don't have a Bible, don't worry. Just follow along with us on the screen. The version that we'll be reading from is the New King James Version. So, Mark chapter 12, beginning at verse 13. Then they sent to him some of the Pharisees and the Herodians to catch him in his words. When they had come, they said to him, Teacher, we know that you are true and care about no one, for you do not regard the person of men, but teach the way of God and truth. Is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar or not? Shall we pay or shall we not pay? But he, knowing the hypocrisy, said to them, Why do you test me? Bring me a denarius that I may see it. So they brought it. And he said to them, Whose image and inscription is this? They said to him, Caesar's. And Jesus answered and said to them, Render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. And they marveled at him. In this context, we're dealing with the events of Tuesday of the week that Jesus was crucified. The story we read of here was also covered in our study of Matthew, namely in Matthew 22, verses 15 to 22. Jesus' authority to cleanse the temple was being challenged by the chief priests and Pharisees, and so in Mark's account, Jesus tells the parable of the wicked vine dressers. This parable centered around the fact that there would be some who would accept the gospel of Jesus Christ, while many more would reject it. At the crux of Jesus' argument here was that it was the chief priests, Pharisees, and elders who were among those who would reject the gospel. As we've seen already, and as we're going to continue to see, the teachings of Jesus are getting more focused on the deeds of the Pharisees and chief priests, condemning them for not obeying God. This was done intentionally, for Jesus would need to be crucified in order to be our sin sacrifice. He was not going to force the rulers of the Jews to do this, but he knew that when put in the proper situation, they would do exactly what he wanted them to. Jesus' parable had already stirred up the Pharisees into wanting to kill him, but they didn't do so for they feared the people, for the people viewed Jesus as a prophet. So coming to verse 13, the Pharisees had decided that if they could trap Jesus in his words, they could discredit him as a prophet among the people and then arrest him and send him to be executed. So they and the Herodians came to Jesus with a question which they thought was similar in nature to the question he asked them back in chapter 11 about the baptism of John, one which, no matter the answer that Jesus gave, he would get himself into trouble with someone. The question was, is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar or not? If Jesus said that it was lawful to pay taxes to Caesar, they could turn to the people and say that he was a Rome lover, for the Jews despised the Romans and hated paying taxes to them. If, however, he said it wasn't lawful, then they could turn to the Romans and say that Jesus was leading a tax revolt, something that would cause Jesus to be arrested and probably executed. Either way, they thought, they would stop Jesus from teaching and would be able to arrest him. Jesus, though, is the Son of God, and as such knew their hearts, so he knew of their wickedness and called them out for their hypocrisy in testing him in this way. In answering their question, he asked them for a coin, a denarius, that would be paid in taxes. He asked them whose image and inscription was on it. They answered Caesar's. This meant that they resided in the Roman Empire, and as such, Rome was their government, and Caesar was their ruler. As such, they were to obey their government and pay any taxes that it required. But the Pharisees had also been neglecting to follow God's law completely because they made up traditions to get around it. So just as they owed Caesar what was due Caesar, they owed God what was due God. The same is true of us today. No matter what country we live in, we are to pay all of the taxes owed to our government. Now, if our government gives us legal ways of reducing our tax burden, we can avail ourselves of those, but we aren't to be tax cheats. But what if the government spends my tax money on sinful things? Once we pay our taxes, the money is no longer ours, and those in the government will be held responsible should they spend it on sinful things. Here and in Romans 13, Christians are reminded to obey their government and pay their taxes. So if we want to be followers of God, that's what we must do. In the same vein, we should give God what is due Him as well. This would include our time, our worship, our contribution to the local church, our spiritual sacrifices, our honor and devotion, our love and our life. Being a Christian is a 24-hour day, 365-day-a-year thing. 
There is nothing that is righteous that we shouldn't be willing to do in order to be faithful to God. When Jesus gave the response that he did, the Pharisees and Herodians marveled, and they couldn't argue against it. Jesus had yet again thwarted their attempt to trap him in his words. With that, our time is up today, Lord willing. We hope you'll join us for tomorrow's discussion of Mark chapter 12, verses 18 to 27, as we continue our walk through the Bible, one verse at a time. I'm not a Thank you for watching today's episode. We hope that you found it edifying and ask that you not only subscribe to our channel and podcast, but that you like and share this episode among your friends so that the saving gospel of Jesus Christ can go out to the whole world.